Over the last few weeks and months at Donald Trump's political rally, some of you might have noticed this as well, he has been reiterating a certain point that I have found very curious. He has said that while he will not govern, quote-unquote, as a dictator, he will be a dictator on day one or day two when it comes to the border. Now, usually a lot of folks clap and think that he's just talking about signing an executive order to close the border. I think there's something else going on here. I think Donald Trump knows something. I think he is in possession of a certain amount of information that he's not revealing in detail. And in this video, I'd like to show some other evidence that points to this. Now, real quick, as always, I want to say thank you to everyone who continues to join us over the Florida Monkey Patreon channel, one US dollar per month at the base level, hundreds of videos never before seen on YouTube, fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. There's a $5 level, there's a handful of really intense videos for those of you that are um, not so much a snowflake anymore. Those of you who are wanting to go back to a time when we could speak our minds. We got a $5 level as well. Would love to have you over there. Would sure help me out a lot. God bless all of you who are. I'm not going to waste a lot of your time on this, but would love to see a lot more people over there where we're partnering with Vimeo, where you can take the gloves off, second level, second speed bump to keep the sensors away. So thank you so much. If you'd consider it, I'd sure appreciate it. Now, over the last 10 to 15 years, it's sprung up like a cottage industry. We know an attack is coming. We know there are folks out there that mean to do us harm here in North America. Where? That's been the big question. There's a lot of really good, juicy targets out there for our enemies. But you'd have to ask yourself a question. Which one target, if you had to put all of your marbles into one target would give you the most bang for your buck, so to speak. And I think I figured something out on this. And I think it has to do with a lot of what this sheriff said. How many of you saw this, where the sheriff came out and said that he was having a conversation with folks from immigration, FBI, and they said that basically there's so many bad people here now, it's not a matter of if we're attacked, but when. I would ask also the question, well, it also matters where to have the effect. Now, a lot of folks have debated on the idea of D.C., New York. Those are good targets. Those are really good targets, but they're also heavily secured targets. Very, very difficult. Um, lots of security around those places. It would be hard to get one major big punch into one of these places. But there is a place that I argue would be far more devastating than D.C. or New York. And that's Chicago. Now, what does this have to do with Donald Trump and what he's been saying? A lot of folks, it's, it's known as the second city, basically of New York being the first city, Chicago being the second city. There's a lot, there's, unless you're from that area, and full disclosure, I was born and raised in northern Indiana. I haven't lived in Florida my whole life. There's something that a lot of folks don't know. Just outside of Chicago, just to the south and east of Chicago, is the single largest major rail hub in the in entire, I'd say the entire hemisphere. All of the goods that transit through our country go through that area. Now, what got me thinking about this in regards to Trump... How many of you saw after this ruling, this this Judge Angeron or whatever his name is, um, fined Mr. Trump 300 and something odd million dollars for fraud, said he can't do business in New York, all this kind of stuff. And then all these, these truckers for Trump said, okay, well, fine, we're going to punish New York City. Well, then after a while, after cooler heads prevailed, they realized, you know what? This doesn't really punish the judge. It doesn't punish the liberals in New York. It punishes a lot of people that had a whole lot to nothing to do with it. So they've quietly backtracked on this idea of now truckers refusing loads to, to New York. And you'd have to ask yourself, ask yourself the question, why would that have an effect? Well, it's something called the velocity of money. And it has a lot to do with the economy. 
The velocity of money is the measure of the total market value of economic transactions relative to the total market value of the monetary base. Basically, the idea is this. Everything else remaining equal, if the value of our money falls, then every unit of base money must turn over more often to get the same value of transactions done and the velocity of money rises. Well, what if you, instead of going after the value of the money, what if you went after the velocity of the money, meaning you could shut down trade and bring it to a screeching halt? There's no better place you could do this than at the Chicago rail yards. If you were going to hit somewhere in North America, the best place to hit would be the rail yards. Now, a lot of folks say, well, Florida Maquis, just like New York and D.C. and other major cities, all sorts of security in Chicago. You see, you wouldn't have to hit Chicago. You would hit just to the south and just to the east in Gary, Calumet City, Hammond, Munster, this area. This is where all the changeover is. And let me show you a map real quick. Th this is what makes this, this so devastating. If you look at all of these diff different colors of lines here, these are all of the different rail companies. All of the colors, all of them converge just outside of Chicago. Amtrak, BNSF, Union Pacific, CSX, Norfolk Southern, all of them. All of them hub right outside of Chicago. And on top of that, you could shut down with one attack right here, right at the border of Illinois and Indiana right here five major interstates, possibly six, 80, 90, 94, 65, 57, and truly you'd shut down 294 as well, all right in this little about 20 mile area. And on top of it, you'd cause a mass panic in Chicago if they looked south and east and they saw a giant mushroom cloud that hit this area it would be a double whammy. You'd shut down truck traffic. You'd shut down rail traffic. You'd cause a mass panic. And you would bring the velocity of money in this country to a screeching halt simply because there'd be no way to move the goods. And when it comes to security, this area right here, this, this is a concrete wasteland. Everything from Whiting all the way in to Burns Harbor, all this area, is just garbage. It was garbage when I used to live up there decades and decades ago. You, you, didn't, you didn't stop going through here when you were transiting, you know, this area. You don't stop. You don't. You stop. If you got to stop, you stop way back here and you make your way all the way through. Nobody stops here. It is that dangerous and that much of a... Uh, Detroit is better than Gary. That's how bad it is. Let's see. I thought I had another map of this up here. Yeah, here it is. All the different railroad lines. And this would truly shut down the economy. And another thing that got me thinking about this, and this is to me another piece of evidence, go ahead and Google. Just Google the term. Stock market will crash in 60 days. Now, you can go back to exactly this time last year. And see this, that they were in March of 2023, they were saying we are 60 days out from a, from a market crash. Go back to October of 2022, they said the same thing. And it didn't happen. You see, regardless of the debt, regardless of interest rates, it always falls down to the, veloc the velocity of money and people buying things. Whether those things are expensive or not is another matter. In fact, the more expensive they are, the what you would the measure would actually be the velocity of money would be faster. Because more money is moving, even if it's moving slower. You see, if you if you think a hey, think let's take for example um, a dozen eggs, a dozen eggs that costs twice as much only needs half as many people buying them to have the same velocity of money. Because $12 worth of eggs is being bought, whether it's one dozen eggs going to one person or two dozen eggs going to two different people, it's the same velocity. What would have to happen 
is somebody would have to figure out how to physically shut down, how to physically shut down the transfer of goods back and forth. And to my mind, that's what I think Trump knows. That's what I think Trump knows, is that somebody is making this plan and they have figured this out. And while you could you could attack D.C. and it would be a major problem and be a national security violation and all this, there would, there would be parts of the country that would get up and they would go about their normal economic business. Same thing in New York, if there were an attack up there, just like we saw on 9-11. The rest of the country went about our business. I worked that day. Show of hands, how many people on 9-11 got up and went to work that day? How many people got up and went to work the next day? And the next day, and the next day. You see, it wouldn't matter who uh, essential services are if they hit the rail yards in Chicago. It wouldn't matter if you can't get stuff from point A to point B, and if you shut down five major interstates and virtually all rail traffic at, at one major hub like that. I don't care how what the prices are of anything. Things are going to run out, and they're going to run out fast. So looking back at this, if there's ever a target, that's going to be it. That's going to be the target. Because what they have to do, if they want to really bring down America, if they want to bring this, you know, the rest of this country down, they're going to have to shut down the economic engine. And 9-11 didn't do it, and COVID didn't do it. COVID did it very, very temporarily and caused a major hiccup. But, you know, as evidenced, by things being so expensive, the economy came roaring back. Now, a lot of people like to argue the economy is not that great because things are expensive. That's actually the sign of the economy being good because people are buying things. There aren't as many things on the shelves, ergo the prices go up. It's when the prices go down and things crash and you can't get them at any price. That's when you got to worry. Because it, it would take them years, years and years and years to stand that back up. If there was a major attack, Gary, Indiana, Hammond, East Chicago, and it's one of the most unsecured areas of the whole country. Chicago is secure, downtown for sure. But just outside, just across the Skyway, an attack there, that'd be the end of it. So anyway, pay attention to what Mr. Trump's saying. I think he's telegraphing something. I'll leave it there. Once again, God bless all of you at Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us. I could sure use your help these days. Only a dollar. Not per video, not per week, just per month. Make a huge difference. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.